What is up, Internet? Don here from DonDoes30.com, bringing another hacking tutorial to you. And this is going to hopefully clear up a lot of the questions I've been asking about WPS cracking. And a lot of people have been running into the situation where the access point has been locking them out. And basically, it detects a brute force type of attack. And the access point is doing its job by, te uh, by keeping attackers out and not allowing you to continue with the attack. Which, for you know, the people that are actually owning that system um, or, you know, who use that router, it's a good thing. But uh, for people trying to get in, it's a bad thing. So there's a new, uh, there's a new attack called the uh, Pixie, what is it, the Pixie something attack? I think it's just called a, oh, Pixie Dust attack. And what that does is it basically reverse engineers the pin and let's go ahead and I'm going to go through the process of installing everything because it's a it's not included in Kali Linux. In fact, it's pretty new, so you're going to have to do an apt-get update to update your repository links. And then we're going to download all the dependencies that the Pixie attack needs and we're going to update Reaver with the newest version of Reaver using a um a program from GitHub. Now, when we do this, let's go ahead and start getting the, uh, the installation files going up here. Now, some of these might be installed in your system already. Some of them might not be, but it's always good to check. So Build Essential was already installed in my system. And again, we're going to want to go through these and install each one. So, you know, if you need to pause the video for something to go ahead and install, feel free to do so. But uh, at the same time, we want to make sure that we get all these dependencies up and running before anything else. I'll go through the hierarchy of what the attack should look like and how the attack order should take place. Of course, WEP is uh, actually open. Wi-Fi routers are obviously the easiest. WEP is the second easiest to crack. And now with this, WPS, the Pixie Dust attack, is really easy. WPS brute force attack would be a next and then followed by WPA WPA2 um, password hashing. So if you followed my series so far, you'll you should have gone through all of those. If not, uh, check out some of my other videos. Now it's it's good to tell you that this attack is not going to work with all Wi-Fi WPS routers. And the reason is this is really only for certain chipsets. Now, I'll go over what uh, what the hell I'm talking about in just a second. SQLite 3 dev. Oops. Would help if I type the install. Because I've had certain luck on different routers than others. So, it's uh, it's good to go through those with you guys. Um, the router I've had the most success with, the chipset is a raw link. Uh, the second chipset was Realtek, and then Broadcom, I've had very, very little success. So those three are the, the real main chipsets. I'm not going to go over how to determine the chipset because the... Um, actually, I, I might. But realistically, just run this attack. It's actually a pretty, uh, pretty quick and simple attack. And hopefully you've been following along and doing the installs with me because that was the last dependency install. And now we're going to install, compile, and update Reaver, which is a tool that we've used in the past for WPS cracking. So now the real fun starts now that the dependencies are done. Go to git clone https github.com t6x reaver wps fork t6x. And that's going to go ahead and download this directory right here to your hard drive. Alright, so let's change directory to the reaver and we're going to change directory again to the source and these are all the source files that we need. So make sure those are all there. We're going to do a dot slash configure to get the configuration file up and running. Then we're going to go ahead and make to do the compiling. And then once this is done In a minute, we will do the make install, and then we get to cracking. All right. 
So I'm going to clear this out. Now, what we want to do is we first have to find the router or the access point that we're trying to crack into. So let's go ahead and put the wireless card in monitor mode. And actually it's uh, Airmon G start WLAN zero. Now one other thing I've been getting a lot of questions about, if you look here, there are three processes that could cause some conflicts, okay? And here's all the processes that might cause some conflicts when you're trying to crack into networks. If this, these three are different depending on your card and depending on how Reaver has installed the drivers. Now if you're, if you're running into issues, do this. And actually I probably suggest everybody do this anyway. Airmon NG check kill. And what that does is it checks the processes that are giving the conflicts and it goes, it goes ahead and closes those down and kills them. So you're not, you shouldn't have any more conflicts after this. All right, so let's take a look at arrow dump NG on Mon Zero. And look at this, we've got a bunch of routers, a bunch of connections that we're gonna do. Now to single out the ones that are WPS enabled or um, I'm gonna go to wash-i monitor mode and hit enter. And this is going to give us a list of Wi-Fi routers that have WPS enabled. And mine should come up hopefully in a second. I actually was hoping it would come up first. There it is. So this is the one we're going to crack into, my TrendNet router that we've been using for oh so very long. Um, here's the MAC address and the channel. So keep these handy because what we're going to do, let me switch screens here. Let's go to the new and improved Reaver. All right. Now with the new and improved Reaver, you're going to notice a lot more options than we had in the past. Now don't let that intimidate you because we're only going to use just a couple of these. What we're going to do is Reaver I Mon Zero. The B indicates the MAC address. So we'll go back to this terminal and grab the MAC address, the one that we're trying to get into. Copy that, paste that. Uh, we're going to do super verbose basically. Uh, K1 is one of the newer options, and that's for the pixie dust um, attack, and put K1-1, and then F. Oh, also, what I want to do, because I've been getting a lot of questions on this, um, a lot of people have been seeing that Reaver cycles through different channels. If you want to specify the channel, do uh, dash C, and this is, um, for this router, it's channel 10. It's going to help you uh, so it doesn't cycle. All right, once we do that, hit enter. And what we're gonna see is it's gonna go through a bunch more options or a bunch more information that we had in the past. Uh, right now the WPS isn't found, so because we did the dash F, it's gonna do a brute force. Now look at this, this can take around 30 minutes. Now the good news is 30 minutes is a hell of a lot less than trying to brute force it the old way. And the old way, again, took about uh, anywhere between a couple of seconds to mine took three days to complete. Now, okay, so we're done actually. Check this out. So the 30 minutes, it didn't even take 30 minutes. The Pixie Dust used this information to find the WPS pin. The WPS pin from there was used to get my password. So that's it. Again, this is another attack on WPS. Um, if if you run out of luck, if it says WPS not found, WPS not found, and this never comes up, um, that basically means the chipset is not available um, or it's not vulnerable. Um, again, to find the chipset, what you want to do when this runs through and you can verify the chipset, um, it's going to give you the TrendNet router and the model number. Now, if you Google this model number with uh, chipset, so just type in TEW-731BR uh, space chipset, uh, you could do some, some reconnaissance on what the chipset is. Now this is, a, I believe, a Realtek or a Rawlink chipset. Again, those two I've been having the most success with. The Broadcoms I've had very little success with. Um, those are usually found in Cisco routers and some of the, the higher end routers, so it kind of makes sense that th those are a little bit more secure. But Again, this is going to be a lot faster than trying to go ahead and brute force your way through 11,000 possible pin combinations. 
So there you have it. If you guys have any questions or feedback, let me know. If you're running into any issues, I try to get to the comments as fast as I can. But um, hopefully this is pretty straightforward and you'll be able to crack those WPS enabled routers in no time. Thanks again. For